with the two ships entangled in each other, sinking slowly. Ott fell between the ships while gutting Rorask and slicing out the latter's internal organs. Hail and well met, and welcome back to another Realms Lore video. I am here with the original creator of the Forgotten Realms, Sarah Ed Greenwood himself, and today we're talking about something technological. Uh, you want to give him a little hint about what's what's up and coming? Sure. Yeah, Ivan. Um, do you remember the cover of FR One Waterdeep in the North? Yes. Blue cover. Beholder. Oh yeah. Okay. Classic. There is a character on that cover with a peg leg, and this video is called Peg Leg No More. And we're going to talk about that character, Ot Steeltoes, and we're going to talk about prosthetics. Beautiful. If you are enjoying these Realms Lores videos, please be sure to uh, check out the Patreon. That's patreon.com slash edgreenwood. And the support from becoming a protector of the realms is actually what facilitates us to create these videos here for you. So in the interim, please enjoy this video on Ot Steeltoes and Gondon prosthetics. Ot Steeltoes is an aging, slow-moving dwarf who continues to serve the Xanathar for the last two decades as a seller and trader, that is, swapper, of stolen goods, and as a watchdog over younger and more energetic smugglers working in the Xanathar's guild. So he's often on the road between Waterdeep and Scornubel, Triel, Baragost, and Baldur's Gate, or holed up in those settlements, having shady meetings in back rooms. The Xanathar uses resident ages, agents in Neverwinter and Elturel. Ott is a gruff, feisty, testy miser, but he uses his old, crotchety, and simple-minded dwarf act to conceal shrewd judgment of strangers, a lot of patience, and a mind that swiftly sees costs, profit margins, consequences, and possible hurdles. Ott's real name is Ocular Ironmaster, although he was expelled from his clan, and as of the 1490s DR, his few close relatives are scattered in mountain cavern holds around Durpar and Semfar. Long ago, after he could find no tenable way to lie his way out of responsibility for his sixth murder of a fellow clan member. First infamous as a pirate along the Sword Coast, and after his retirement to onshore smuggling, notorious in Waterdeep for years due to his peg leg, which made him readily identifiable by witnesses to a crime, Ott now has a full leg prosthesis custom made by clergy of Gond, for which he paid 25,000 gold pieces. He also owns two earlier, cruder backup legs the first of which cost 27,000 gold pieces, and the second 20,000 gold pieces. Ott's old peg leg, now stored in hiding within one end of the hollow, gigantic headboard of the massive four-poster bed upon which he's known to sport with various ladies of negotiable affections, bore enchantments that quelled all pain in his stump and bonded his leg securely to the peg leg so he had little need for straps and a harness. However, the prosthetics offered by Temples of Gond have improved markedly throughout the 1330s and 1400s DR, until even a miser like Ott was an, unable to resist an upgrade. A typical arm or leg prosthesis offered by Gondite clergy looks like a real, natural limb in shape and movement, but typically is of smooth metallic construction and looks. The buyer can usually choose between reflective or matte finish. He can pivot, point toes and flex in other ways, and offers full joint mobility and supple movements. All of the more expensive prostheses bear pay-to-renew cleric spells that keep them bonded to the body and give good motor control. So a wearer would have fingers that can do delicate work, but are as hard as steel and don't feel pain. Even if Ott had to use a stock prosthesis rather than a custom one, it would come with a superb yoke to attach it to the wearer and good joints. 
even the crudest and most inexpensive Gondon artificial limbs, available new for 25,000 gold pieces or even less for devout and devoted faithful of Gond or for those willing to do work or undertake a mission for the temple, have feet that flex at the ankle, hands that offer a grip, thumb and fingers, and a finger the wearer can point, both manipulated by the other hand. A wearer would use it to move the artificial thumb and fingers into position, and they would then remain there, providing a secure hold. Not every individual will be able to find clergy who are able and willing to cast regenerate or be able to afford such a casting. Moreover, in the case of someone born without a limb, regenerate won't work. Ott lost his left leg when the last pirate ship he commanded, the fast raker, the Kissing Kelpie, was rammed by the caravel Rorask's Cutlass, captained by the rival pirate, Trell Rorask. In the weld fight that followed, with the two ships entangled in each other, sinking slowly, Ott fell between the ships while gutting Rorask and slicing out the latter's internal organs. The two ships were grinding along each other's hulls at the time as their crews struggled to separate them. And when they tore apart, Ott's left leg was crushed. He was soon amputated above the knee. From time to time, Ott also sports an eye patch, but this began as part of how he thought a pirate should look, rather than something he needed to curb light entering a damaged eye or as a covering for an empty eye socket. So, it's a fashion accessory, and one he rarely uses these days, now that he's most often festooned with a beholder beanie skullcap hat, hide sewn into the likeness of a beholder in its eye stalks. Ott vastly prefers his new full-leg prosthesis to his old peg leg, as it makes walking far more comfortable, and because he can use its compartments, its hollow areas with slide-off cover panels, as hiding places for such things as poison darts, 60 feet of waxed black cord with a folding grapple hook on one end, a full set of lock picks and tools including large crowbars, hidden funds beyond the paltry coins he carries in his belt pouch alongside his eating knife, and the like. Ott has taken to wearing a custom-made steel shoe on his right foot that matches the steel foot of his artificial leg. The soles of both contain magnets so Ott can walk around on the sheet ferrous metal sheathed ceilings with paths up to the ceilings on the walls of his modest subterranean fortress dwelling under a certain trades ward cellar, not the rooms he sometimes occupies in Skullport when on guild business. He does this with a poison bolts crossbow in hand when he suspects intruders are near so as to surprise them from above and has gotten in a lot of practice at loosing bolts at particular spots in his home, well, upside down. Odd is perhaps the guild member most trusted by the current Xanathar, as much as that paranoid beholder trusts anyone. This is due largely to Odd's demonstrated loyalty, his willingness to wear the watchful cap, and to his attentive care for Stilgar, the Xanathar's pet goldfish. The Beholder is unaware that Ott has hired not one, nor two, but three separate Skullport Ladies of Pleasure to raise and tend look-alike goldfish as hasty replacements for Stilgar. Twice now, Ott has had to hastily devour raw dead Stilgars to conceal the death of the little fish the Xanathar dotes on. The watchful cap is the ridiculous-looking Rothay hide beanie skullcap Ott is often seen wearing these days. It is a helm of telepathy of unlimited range that enables the Xanathar and Ott to have back and forth silent metal conversations, but it's tiring for both entities to use, draining one hit point from both per additional minute after three minutes of cumulative time in any 24 hours. The Xanathar typically orders Ott to wear it to report in for instructions in a particular situation 
such as when negotiations with other smugglers or fences of stolen goods get ticklish. But of course, spies on Ott through it. Ott, being no simpleton, is quite aware of this. The Deep in the 1490s DR has a handful of crafters who can make, modify, repair, and sell new and used prosthetics for clients who don't want to seek out clergy of Gond. These include Kelder Renderon of North Ward, North Front Horn Street, three doors west of Horn's Moot with Selrin Street, a prim, prissy perfectionist of a thick, bespectacled old half-elf who appears to have artificial metal arms. But these are really arm armor that incorporates wands to keep them handy. He's a 16th level wizard who works with his three daughters themselves, skilled mages of 7th to 9th level. Zelperla Thornflower of Trades Ward, West Front Buckle Street, three doors north of its moot with Salabar Street. A cheerfully foul-mouthed, upbeat, hard drinker of a buxom halfling woman who works quickly and is very good at improvised repairs. And Dulner Chantarl of Southward, West Front Carter's Way, four doors south of its moot with Coach Lamp Lane. An albino gnome with a huge jutting jaw and nose to match who works with his six children to keep a large array of artificial arms and legs in stock that he can swiftly modify by reassembling their components, or who can craft custom ones in a few days shy of a month. There are persistent tavern tales in Waterdeep of prosthetic arms that can thrust forth poison needles or daggers as weapons. Officially, all three of these crafters deny ever making such things, and will suggest seeking in Skullport. But as for the truth, well, like so many things in the realms, you'll ha have to uncover that for yourself. The hard way. Hi! Welcome to Realm Speak, and this time around, we're doing this. Zvart, which sounds very rude, but in this case, it's the name of a rather nasty, um, small subterranean race of, uh, uh, sorry, a large subterranean race of very small creatures. <laughs> Zvart. So that X at the beginning is pronounced like a Z or a Z, depending on whether you're Canadian or American. Zvart. And you can actually sit on it, like as I just did. And if you're in Tethyr or Kalimshan, you will hear that. It's never Zvart, it's Zvart. You take your time, Zvart, like a mosquito. Z okay, Zvart. Love ya. Oh, we're good? Yeah. No, oh, Anyway. Okay. Ha <laughs> ha! Here we go. How are we looking? Beautiful. Okay. 